My name is Michael Sargent. I own and run the FV Tina Marie 2. It's a 42 foot Westmac here in Steuben, Maine. And I'm uh, currently working or working out of Francis Lobster Company. This is definitely a commercial lobster fishing working water frontage. We don't have mega yachts pulling in and wanting special fuel and treatment. We don't have aquaculture coming in right now. We don't have other people that are trying to use this water frontage. So it's pretty much just lobsters and and that sort of thing, which allows us to keep our bait down here, allows us to keep our fuel the way we want it, and, and everything. So it makes it a little easier on us. Versus my friends down in like Portland or Friendship, they're competing against a lot of other people for that usage. And this wharf is also a really, like a, it's a family-oriented wharf. And that's one thing, I, that's the reason why we can keep it going, is that it is all family-run, and the money stays within the family and the community, versus just a big corporate business running, and that money gets shipped wherever the office is based. I think the best way to describe it is like comparing it to like a, like a farmer. And uh, the farmer has all these fields and that's the equivalent to our oceans. And, uh, but you need roads to access those fields. The roads are our working water frontage. I could have hundreds of square miles of ocean to go fishing in, but if I can't get access to that, I can't go fishing. The idea that we could be the last generation to actually have the access, then all the depth of these communities is right behind it because there's nothing else to support it. You know, whereas you know certain other places like uh, Bar Harbor and other these you know really tourist destinations, they can survive. But maintaining a working water frontage is the only way to maintain these communities. Sea Grant is a federal state partnership. Um, we're part of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration and the University of Maine. We have an extension team that serves as a liaison between coastal communities and the academic world in trying to help coastal communities address all kinds of different questions they have. We work directly with stakeholders and um, the changing nature of coastal access was becoming really recognized um, as something that was uh, changing rapidly in the early to mid 2000s. Um, and so we started um, to host a series of workshops um, on the changing nature of working waterfront and what the impacts were of um, declining working waterfront and declining access for um, commercial fishermen and other uh, people whose livelihood depends on access to the water. The conversion of private property has been a really big concern for folks interested in protecting the working waterfronts um, because we're seeing a decline in private property that is maintained in working waterfront status and it might be converted to what's considered a non-compatible use, so a use that isn't supportive of, say, a commercial and fishing enterprise. Most often, properties are assessed at their highest potential use. So current use taxation on working waterfront was passed by Maine voters to say that working waterfront lands should be assessed at their current use um, rather than their potential highest and best use which means that the taxes will probably be a little bit lower for the waterfront landowner, the impetus being, or the hope being, that it will decrease the incentive to sell. Booth Bay has always been a tourist destination for a lot longer than I've been around. And that, nothing's changed aside from it just continues to grow in economic power. You know, vacation homes, hotels, restaurants. They have more economic power than we do as a fishing industry, and we're competing for the same real estate, and there's only so much here. Our organization, a member of the Booth Bay Region Maritime Foundation, was able to purchase a pier there on the other side of the harbor that was uh, for sale and in rough condition, and there was a threat there that it'd be bought up and converted to something like we're here now, just docking seasonally for yachts. And we were, we were nice enough to get a donor who was able to donate the property to us. Because of course, otherwise, um, purchasing a property like that's out of reach for you know your average fisherman, you know, fishing families. Even if we all got together and tried to buy it as a group, run it as a co-op, the purchase price plus the repairs, you're talking multi-millions of dollars. Our industry is one of the few 
that's here year round. You know, there's there's some land, you know, plowing maybe, and then the snow and things, but half the properties here aren't plowed in the winter because there's no one in them. You know, we're we're the backbone of the year-round resident. There's towns where fishing's it. You know, if you want to drive two and a half hours east of here to some of those small communities, they don't get the tourism we do. Without fishermen, those towns are nothing. Booth Bay, Bar Harbor to a large extent, Harpswell, uh, Portland should be a warning to a lot of other harbors particularly to the east, the eastern part of the state, Washington County, the islands, Vinyl Haven. Development's coming, and it just keeps coming up the coast, and more and more you'll look like a suburban Connecticut neighborhood, less and less like a small little neighborhood, and your waterfront will be bought up. Right, so the Maine Coast Fishermen's Association is an industry-based nonprofit, and uh, we work with commercial fishermen throughout the state of Maine. And as we've been going throughout our work, we uh, have heard from more and more fishermen that one of their major concerns is uh, the future of Maine's working waterfront. And so that's uh, where we have started to get engaged, is trying to make sure that fishermen have a voice within their communities, um, within the state, to make sure that others understand that the working waterfront is important, just as important as farmland um, or um, anything else where we have uh, valuable local food production taking place. One of the things that we are trying to do through our organization is give them the knowledge and the tools so that they aren't just sitting there in fear and worry and anxiety. People's mindsets start to change when they think that they know how to engage and when they feel as though they are being heard and listened to. So I'll say the Maine Coast Fishermen's Association, uh, Ben Martens, has been very helpful to us as an advisor, more knowledge, because we're a newly found nonprofit less than a year ago. And we, we're a group of people that have never done this before, and we don't know, you know, so he's been extremely helpful. As far as public support, I think the vast majority of people here like the working waterfront, but that's a, that's a tricky topic, you know. I, people have asked me before, well, don't tourists come to see the boats, come to see the fishermen? And I said, well, yes, but they also come to stay in a waterfront hotel. And they also don't like when 4.30 in the morning they're woken out of bed by lobster boats starting and lights, you know, turning on or stinky bait next door. So there's sort of a line, you know, I think people do want to come see us, but I think that's to a point. Oftentimes the problem you run into when you're thinking about whether it's farmland or a working waterfront um, or any type of you know, preservation discussion is you start thinking about things in historic terms. And when we're talking about the working waterfront, we don't want to just talk about a way, a way of preserving the history that's associated with that industry because that starts getting people in the mindset of fishing for the past. Uh, and if we are preserving this working waterfront, are we preserving it in the same way that we preserve a beautiful building um, that is basically a museum? And that's not what the working waterfront is. It's a place where work gets done. And as we are in our communities and hearing from the younger generation of fishermen who are thinking about their futures, the futures of their communities, um, the working waterfront is a piece of that. And what we are hoping to do is restart a conversation in Maine that's not about preserving a heritage, it's about preserving an opportunity. And that working waterfront opens up opportunity. And once it disappears, it doesn't come back. And so we need to be finding ways to incentivize innovation on our working waterfronts. Collaboration around the working waterfront issue is absolutely critical. Everybody is... Um, interested in accessing the shore often through the same places, through the same you know, public piers or wharves. Um, and so it implicates all waterfront users. So commercial fishermen are involved, um, property owners are involved, municipalities are involved, um, recreational or boaters are involved. There's, there's a really diverse, um, really kind of everyone on the coast of Maine is somehow connected to the working waterfront issue. So without those partnerships, you couldn't really address the working waterfront challenges. I think the working waterfront kind of embodies people's connection to the sea in this region. Folks who live on the coast of Maine, whether they are personally fishing or not, identify as being a part of um, fishing communities. So it sort of embodies the cultural identity of the coast of Maine. You know, it's a, be part of a fishing community is very unique. Like when you, if something, when something bad happens around here, the whole community gets involved. There's been cases where guys' boats have sunk, and all the fishermen come together to actually bring the boats to the service using all our hydraulics and knowledge. And 
and generally it's it's all done within the community for nothing. I mean, no one gets paid to do this stuff. That's what gives me hope, is to maintain that way of life, and hopefully we can continue to see it, you know, grow in a sense, but also just maintain what we've had. Everything that you know allows us to get into the ocean starts at that wharf. So that is the where it all starts, I guess. That's where you learn to. You see the boat come in as a little kid. You go down the wharf to see that. You know, when my dad was alive, that's where I went and saw him like 99% of the time. You know, all the memories of the big hauls and the big you know, like tuna fish that come in from the offshore, they get offloaded right here. So after when someone catches a big one, we all come down, see it, take pictures, and the whole story. When there's a new boat launch, we all line up on the wharf and watch the boat go by and, and see everything. So it's the, it's the place where all, all this happens. So all those memories are directly connected to that. So it's cool to keep that going and just, I don't know, it makes you feel like home in a sense. In that, cause you, when I come around that island and see the wharf and the lights and everything, it's just really nice to know that I'm coming back here. My name is Lanaya, and the boat that I have is Lanaya Jade, and the boat is in Northeast Harbor, Maine. Who do you fish with? My mom and my grandma, sometimes my dad. I like being out at sea. I get to like see cool stuff sometimes on the water like dolphins, seals. My favorite part is probably baiting because I just like, I don't know, I just like it. How do you like my friends? When I'm, like, when I'm taking when, you yeah, fishing? Yeah. I think it's pretty fun, a little stressful when you guys are not listening, but I like when you guys have fun besides when you're having mud fights and get mud all over the boat. Um, what do you like about this Northeast Harbor? I like that it's very beautiful and quiet and everyone, for the most part, gets along. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. I mean, I wouldn't trade it. I mean, I've <laughs> being on the water working every day is, is awesome and it's wonderful for anyone that lives on this island year round to be have, have access to the ocean and I'm able to help a lot of the younger girls that are her friends and help them get their student licenses and bring them out to haul their traps and just keep it going and hopefully the younger you know hopefully she wants to do it at least she has the opportunity to but yeah no I mean I just hope that the harbor keep you know maintains the working waterfront and doesn't change over too drastically to anything.